Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and to the first ever episode of the Skyrim Legendary Survival Permadeath series, which is the first series on this brand new channel. I skipped most of the intro because I figured if you are someone who's clicking on a video like this, you have probably seen many a Skyrim video before. Uh, my plan for this run is to do a sort of hybrid build between a conjuration and a stealth archer build, since those are two of the most popular and powerful ways to play this game. Uh, they also have certain benefits, especially with survival mode. My main plan is going to be to use the bound bow as my primary weapon, as it has no weight, uh, which is super helpful on survival mode because you have half the base carry weight. And I also plan to use uh, Atronox uh, in instances in which I am not able to use stealth and have to be forced into direct combat. Um, Atronox are able to absorb a lot of the damage that I've been running and taking. If you've ever played Legendary Difficulty before, you know that you have a very, very small amount of time to continue to be alive if you're being hit by enemies. So. That being said, the damage differences uh, to Atronox are not affected in the same way that the damage is uh, skewed against you in Legendary Difficulty. I believe in Legendary Difficulty, you are you deal 0.5 damage and are dealt three times damage against you, making uh, basically any individual enemy in the game rather overpowered and rather able to mess you up if you're not uh, either overleveled or overly prepared for them. That being said, Astronox are not affected by this damage buff uh, or debuff, which allows them to uh, work in ways that would be incredibly difficult for you to do, uh, just playing normal legendary difficulty without any help. Uh, I'm siding here with Hadvar. I don't know if I'm going to do the Imperial Legion or the Civil War storyline, um, but in this case I figured as a Breton conjuration, uh, really just for the sake of role playing, it made more sense than going with the Stormcloaks. We should keep moving. Come here. Let me I, see if I can get nine times out of ten, do go with Rayloff. There you go. Take a look around. There should be plenty of gear to choose from. I'm going to see if gonna I can find get some of my. First sets of gear here. Um, for the time being, in the intro, you just sort of have to use whatever you've got. But the other benefit of starting as a uh, Breton, playing as a Breton character, if you're trying to do a Conjuration build, not only do you start with 25 Conjuration, but you also immediately begin with the Conjure Familiar spell which allows you to immediately begin um, leveling up your Conjuration skill, and although the Conjure Familiar does little damage, it is still effective at tanking damage so that you can stay back and hit enemies with spells or bow or anything like that, which is going to be the main move of the play style uh, for this character because trying to fight enemies one-on-one -on -one in a straight-up fight uh, on Legendary Difficulty and you stand basically no chance. Just a little note about the kind of logistics of these videos is that because this is a brand new channel, my uh, equipment is uh, rudimentary at best, so I'm recording this audio and placing the audio into the video afterwards for two reasons. Uh, one, because I don't have that great of a mic, and recording the audio afterwards allows me to focus more on the audio recording at that time while focusing on the gameplay while I'm actually playing. And that's not as big of a deal uh, right now, because Helgen is not difficult, even on Legendary difficulty. But that being said, once the run continues to go on, there will be instances that will require um, very fast split second thinking that I'm also trying to focus on the commentary at the same time, especially since I'm brand new to this, uh, might end up getting me killed. So I decided it would be better off to just record uh, the commentary afterwards and just focus on the gameplay while I'm actually playing. 
On top of that, uh, you may notice throughout some of the episodes that when uh, every couple of minutes there might be a quick little kind of jump. Um, if you see that jump, that's because the way that I'm putting these videos together is by uh, collecting a number or adding together a number of clips. Because uh, I'm recording this Skyrim gameplay on the Xbox One and those clips can only go for a maximum of 10 minutes each at a time. So. Uh, if you see a stop or kind of a little jump, I'm trying to edit them together the best that I can, but uh, if you notice that little jump, that is, uh, that is what's causing it. You win, I submit. In terms of the goal of this playthrough, uh, it is going to originally just be at least uh, to kind of speed, not straight through the main storyline, but at least pretty quickly, not focusing too much on side quests or guilds, uh, mostly going through just the main uh, storyline of the game, the original Alduin storyline, and depending on whether or not this uh, grows to have um, much of a uh, following or a desire to continue, uh, I can in then extend that or extend this playthrough to try and attempt the DLCs or the Civil War storyline, uh, any of the guild storylines, of course, all of that is predicated on me not dying from the story first, as this is a permadeath run, meaning any death resets the run. Uh, thankfully, in this early portion of the game, uh, even with these stipulations, they don't have to be too hard. But, uh, again, if you've not seen or played Legendary Difficulty before, you'll see that it looks like, even though I'm using an iron sword, it looks like I'm using my fists trying to hit enemies because uh, it really is just that much of a damage difference in terms of uh, how little damage you're able to do on Legendary Difficulty. And if you see the moments where I do get hit a couple of times, you'll notice that even some stray iron arrows from a long bow uh, from very weak, like, less than level 5 enemies can two or three shot you on legendary difficulty, especially when you have little to no armor. Um, in terms of some of the other uh, plans I have for uh, kind of just making this character as powerful as possible, um, I don't plan, I will not be using any cheats or exploits of any kind. Uh, that sort of defeats the purpose of uh, adding all of these explicit levels of difficulty to myself if I was going to then go ahead and do a fortify restoration loop or something like that to get insanely overpowered armor that would more or less defeat the entire purpose of the channel and so uh, obviously won't be doing anything like that. Uh, some people might consider abusing Conjuration and Astronox to tank all the damage as cheating but I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if you get hit in legendary difficulty like three times, you basically die. And especially in the early game, enemies with two-handed weapons are especially dangerous. Uh, it's a little bit easier with one-handed weapons. They do a little bit less damage. But for example, this person right here with great sword. the reason I am so cautious about backing up and trying to knock them off the ledge is because uh, great sword or warhammer, if they get a good power attack in the lock, at least half of your health, even with these very low-level, basic tutorial enemies. Uh, but uh, this is not too, too bad because I have the help of my uh, conjured familiar and uh, some of the other uh, Imperial soldiers that are working with me right now, so this early part of the game is not too difficult. This first episode is going to be quite short, only uh, close to 14 minutes, because I don't necessarily set episode length uh, in terms of time that I want to do. I want to kind of split it up based off uh, missions or separate areas of the game. So this first uh, video is only covering Escape from Helgen, and the next episode will be covering Ember Shard Mine and going to Riverwood for the first time. Um, Trying to uh, 
burn the Storm Cloak soldiers here, accidentally burning my own guy, but that's sort of on him. And you can see there that with a little cut, um, trying to get smoother at that. Um, but that was the best that I could do in this instance. And having a longbow, let's start using the longbow. You know, it's the worst possible bow in the game, it's the best I got for now. Um, like I mentioned early in the video, ultimate plan to use my, as my primary weapon is the bound bow, um, because that has no weight and infinite arrows, which on survival mode, arrows also have weight. And with the very limited starting uh, weight capacity of 150 compared to 300, that's what it normally is. Uh, every 0.1 weight counts as a good cinematic arrow shot to the eye. Uh, these spiders, the first ones especially, are incredibly weak. The second one is a little bit stronger, but these enemies are not even difficult on uh, legendary, thankfully. But that will not always be the case. A couple of sword hits in. Not explicitly trying to level my hand is. But it's said, better to have it than not have it. Uh, although over leveling can be better if I begin to outpace my combat skills, if I begin to level too quickly with non combat skills, and then the enemies become too strong of a level for me, that can obviously cause problems. But as long as you stay in the right areas and right sections of the world based on what level you are, it's usually not too big of a deal. Um, Going to move up one last enemy in this section, which is obviously the bear. Uh, Try and get a sneak attack on him. And he'll be coming straight at me. Also, want to cast uh, familiars or astronauts as often as that as possible. Not to open but even if you have the Magicka, just cast another one because that will continue to level your Conjuration Keep that first one out, even if they were to last till the end of the battle. It's actually better in terms of leveling and leveling your um, Conjuration skill to just go ahead and cast another one. And there we go. Just gotta run the rest of the way out of the cave, but that is all the enemies defeated and first episode tutorial section of Skyrim uh, beaten without dying, which is nowhere near going to be the hard part, obviously. I have never successfully completed a permadeath run on Skyrim. I've come quite close, but not quite made it died. Uh, in literally <laughs> this final boss, or just before the final boss section where you fight Alden like in the uh, Skuldafin area. Um, but I, don't think we should stick but I have completed permadeath runs on Fallout 4 and Fallout 3 before, uh, inspired by some sure other YouTubers I've seen, and that was what inspired me to make this channel and make these videos. So, thank you for watching.